ladies and squeeps. It seems like they're only just talking about magics. So we'll just watch it if that's what we care to do. And I'll jump in and talk shit and annoy everybody a little bit, maybe. Maybe. Probably. Um, yeah, just watch a game out for a bit and we'll see what the bollocks is. Well, like he just did. Points. And the life he's getting from the angel each turn should protect him a little bit more. So let's see if he just moves straight to the combat step here. He is going to guaranteed gain another four life, but he has two champion of wits in the graveyard that are going to be able to be eternalized by this god pharaoh's gift. For champion of shits. <laughs> yeah. It's going to make a big difference here, I think. Let's see what happens. Okay, so. Fairlight thinking about clicking that combat button, maybe casting a sacred cap before combat. Nope, but he's. Oh, oh, oh. He's thinking, oh maybe he's going to combat. All right, okay. he's going to go ahead and go to combat. God Pharaoh's gift is going to trigger. He's going to look through his graveyard and find a nice creature to throw onto the battlefield, create a copy that is a token, but also a 4 4 black zombie with haste. Yep, so there we'll you see what see. happens here. I think Champion of Wits is definitely his best option by far. Because uh, it comes into the battlefield, it's going to draw him four cards, or five, five cards, cards, actually. And he only has to discard two. That's that's card advantage at that its finest. That is, uh, that's real. I mean, also, the cards that he's going to discard are probably ones he wants in his graveyard anyway. Yes, exactly. The synergy of this deck is very, very powerful. I definitely love seeing this deck in action. Because um, once you start going off with it, it is very hard to sort of stop, stop it in its tracks. And there are five cards, two refurbishes. Oh my lordy. So I think you're discarding a Sacred Cat and a Refurbish here. And yeah, and this is the exact reason why he didn't want to cycle his Irrigated Farmland before combat, because now you can use that mana for, for good use post-combat. Yeah, including a second God Pharaoh's Gift, which means he's going to be bringing up two creatures next turn. In fact, if Trihex isn't able to kill him in this next turn, I think it's all but over for him. Yeah. So. Right, right. so he decides to keep actually both Refurbishes in his hand. Maybe he's thinking he'll mill another God Pharaoh's Gift at some point. Uh, but it looks, though, now that he can definitely spend four mana and play that card. Well, first he's, he wants to attack, so that was the beginning of his combat step. That's when God Pharaoh's Gift triggers its ability, is right before you attack, and so... Angel mm, I think they're going to have to figure that out. You put your finger or your mouse over the creature and 15 things come up. It looks like he was just trying to choose it to attack. Yeah, who cares? Worked out pretty far. It worked out she to 16, basically swapping the life totals from 12 to 16, so. And so, yeah, Fairlight gets to play that planes, and maybe he'll chart a course first, maybe he'll cast Refurbish. He's got a lot of options here, but I think a lot of options. Refurbish for that second God Pharaoh's Gift is going to be the play that he Pretty makes. Ideal. Yep. And having two of the God Pharaoh's Gift out now, it means that even if Trihex had a way to get rid of one, well, he's going to have to figure out a way to get rid of two. And not only that, I mean, beginning of combat step and the the next turn is just going to be disastrous for Trihex. So, like you yeah. said before, Trihex basically needs to win on his following turn or else he is done for. And it's going to be really difficult given that that Angel still has lifelink and is still untapped and can block. Yep. It's going to be really, really tough here. At the very least, Trihex can just force a lot of... I think this looks all right now. I mean, it just looks fine. I don't remember, like I said in the previous one, I don't remember these not being curved. So maybe they changed that after people said, we don't like it curved. Oh, this is curved. Maybe it's because it's a token. Maybe you get curved things for tokens and square men for square men. It looks fine. I mean, obviously the problems are going to arise when every deck costs 150 squids, but whatever. And you, you guys saw one of the nice things about MTG Arena, if you're new to the game. Uh, the game will try to intelligently tap your lands for you when you're trying to cast a spell. And if, if you're a more seasoned veteran of the game, you can take full control, use what's called full control mode, yep. and tap exactly the lands you want to, make sure you stop at the exact phases you want to, but very convenient and accessible for, for new players. Yeah. Man, fuck you, fuck you. I know this is a different developer, but every time I hear about uh, effective, intuitive auto taps. Fucking magic jewels. Auto tap every time you try and put fucking shitty gift on it. Gift, gift of paradise. What is it called? I don't even remember. Some enchant land. It's like, yeah, you definitely want to tap the land that gives you the doobies. Eat my balls if you don't know what I'm talking about. A little peanut gallery behind each player, helping yeah. them out. I mean, everyone wants to be a part of the action. This is obviously a very intense matchup, and the players, if they tie here, are gonna, or if, uh, if Fairlight wins here, it's going to be a one-to-one -one 
moving into the finals. Yeah, this right. is... So we this got a walking ballista. That's going to be interesting here. I'm going to see whether or not he starts using it to take out some of the creatures on the other side of the battlefield. Ooh, he's going to bring it up to a 6-6, six, six, though. Wow, look at that. Well, yeah, I mean, it comes into play with X plus one plus one counters on it, but... Yeah, thanks to the ability to be able to tap four mana and the two winding constrictors yeah, on the battlefield. Five, then, Look at it? this. You the walking ballista is just going to start pinging down the lifelink creature, the, the most important creature on yeah. the other side of the battlefield here. And there, there you get go. to see the damage get dealt, and that's one way to deal with that angel. But is Trax still... Uh, I'm not sure he's going to be able to still win on this turn, though. It is going to do a lot of damage here, and if I was him, I would also use the remainder of those points to maybe get rid of the Sacred Cat. Yeah, and and maybe even the Servo, and then force out a lot of damage. But here's the thing. He had to tap the Winding Constrictors to make the Walking Ballista even function. Yep. So the question is, is do you only kill one creature and just keep pumping it up next turn to machine gun down some of the creatures that uh, Fairlight's going to be playing here? Because that actually might be his best option. Well. All right, so he's got some good attacks here. Um, he's going to put the Cat in front, as well as the Servo. I think he wants to keep the Champion of Wits here because he has one extra point of damage he can assign with the Walking Ballista if he chooses to block the 3-2, and that would finish it off. This is actually a really interesting turn of events. Walking Ballista, I didn't expect that yeah. to be the card to turn things around here. <laughs> nah, who I, thinks I, I doing 6 damage? The interaction between one and who would I believe doing 6 damage, uh, however you choose, would change the game? It is obvious at deck construction time, so... Yeah. And here's the thing, Fairlight Excalibur's deck is definitely very much a deck that isn't really interacting with the opponent so much. It's, it's trying to play its own game. It's playing a game on its own side of the table. So the nice thing about Trihax's deck is that he doesn't have to worry so much about individual targeted creature removal, um, even though he has a lot of cards like Blossoming Defense. I think the only removal card that we've seen from Fairlight's deck is Cast Out. Yep. And uh, outside of that, though, these creatures are getting in for quite a bit of damage. And that Walking Ballista really represents a big, big threat against Fairlight Excalibur. I mean, his, his game plan right now is finding more Angel of Inventions and gaining more life. Okay, so still trying to figure out the blockers here from Fairlight's side. Wants to make sure that he can't randomly die. I don't think, think there's any real way that he, he dies here, even if he doesn't block, Definitely so. Not. It'll be interesting to see, though, whether or not he decides to chump block or force a trade and make the Walking Ballista use its last second to last counter on the Champion of Wits. Of course, he is going to be able to make another Champion of Wits next turn. Yeah, and then maybe he's, it's possible that that Champion of Wits draws into another Angel of Invention. Right. Which would be very, very good for a Fairlight Excalibur. Yeah. But unfortunately, because it's two God Pharaoh's Gift and it happens at combat, he won't actually be able to eternalize that. Uh, uh, that. I, I believe God Pharaoh's Gift reads slightly differently than I think you, you're Oh, thinking. you know what? You're it right, because he has two. The first Champion of Wits can discard a yeah. card for the second one to trigger off of. Yeah, so Fine. most cards like this in the past would target a card in the graveyard when it went on the stack. So if the card isn't in the graveyard when, when you enter combat, you can't reanimate it. But the way that God Pharaoh's Gift works is you choose a card, you pick a card in your graveyard when it resolves. It's, a, it's one of the quirks of Magic's rules here. And so if he puts both of those God Pharaoh Gifts abilities onto the stack, uses the first one to select Champion of Wits, and then the Champion of Wits goes on, goes into play, and then he's able to discard an Angel. The second one will allow him to reanimate that Angel. Right. All right, we're seeing Fairlight trying to figure out his blocks here, uh, and whether or not mm -hmm. he wants to stick more creatures onto the Long Tusk Club or not. It's something to be an interesting choice for him. I don't know what he wants to be doing here, though. It's It's... It's tough. I mean, obviously you want to mitigate the damage here being at 16, and if he does hit you with both, that's half your life total. Yeah, looks like he's going to not value the life. Man, it's very different to the game structure, to Magic, magic Jewels. Just, the, the decks are so slick. It just like uh, it's just, It is literally standard. This is Modo with a cleaner skin, which raises the question, what are they going to do about Modos? Is everyone going to be playing this? I don't think they will be, but who cares? As long as this game's good, and as long as it doesn't cost six million squid. Although I don't know why it wouldn't. If you're getting all of Magic, why would it be cheaps? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It's got to at least be on par with the modes. Man, I, uh, all I want to do is play Wormy Coil Engine in a dog shit artifact deck for free. Is that too much to ask? Of course it is. For Fairlight here. Planes off the top, not what he wants to see, though. Yeah, but again, not really the end of the world. 
He can uh, choose to cycle that irrigated farmland if he wants. He's going to play that plains. Uh, maybe not. He's considering. It's one of the things. He got a lot of cards in hand. He got got a lot of cards in graveyard. There's a lot of cards in the table. A lot of options. Yeah. Here's the thing, though. God Pharaoh's gift will be able to bring back both the sacred cat and the champion. Which maybe even more depending on what the champion which draws here. So I think the big first thing, though. Enter that combat step. Enter that combat step. Refurbish has no good targets in the graveyard right now. Both God Pharaoh's gifts that have been put in there are now on the battlefield. This is a real close one, though. The irrigated farmland. He could cycle for two, see if he can draw something else before he gets into it. Or he can even use as content to try and find a non-creature, non-land. But I don't think anything here is really going to help him out. Ooh, I hadn't actually noticed it separates with a clear divide. Uh, creatures, lands, and non-lands. So your, your lands. I don't know why. Ref Maybe he set it up that way to have refurbish in with his planes, whatever. But look at that, you got your creatures over here. I think that's a creature, I can't really see. But that's definitely a refurbish. And there's some lands. For some for the very first time, some for the second or third time. And this is their first try at playing a digital online version of Magic that is the newest digital way to play Magic. Right now it's in closed beta. If you want to join the beta, very simple, go to mtgarena.com. All right, I paused it instead of muted it because I want to see what his follow-up bullshit is. If he's saying that this is these guys' first a game of Magic, playing Pro Tour, playing this well, eat my shit. You can, I don't know if you can hear as well as I can. There are people talking in their ear as they play. I think Kenji's one of them and someone else. You cannot play Pro Tour Magic to this level of squeebles on your first day. What a load of balls. Has to discard Has two to them. discard two of them, right. That'd be too good actually... if it was just a choice. Very good for him to find an Angel of Invention. That is the one that he wants to be dropping. If they have the never played. Perfect. If they have never played, I don't think they know what the fuck is going on. It's like showing your mum, look at this mum. When you're at school, they'll be like, look at what I got at school, mum. And you're like, well, I don't really understand what a Legion of Doom sticker album is. So, fuck off. And then you have to be like, well, I'm happy. I'm happy I got my LOD with the little red spiky bullshits. We are back in business. Yep. First one did not succeed, but the second one is Certainly coming well. down. Let's see if he's going to make a lot of creatures or if he's going to put two. To How did the first one not succeed? He got two creatures. He changed the life totals around. These guys don't know what the fuck they're talking about either. I changed my tune. Everyone's a dickhead again. Just kill the angel of invention outright. That was really, really powerful. Uh, and it definitely really powerful. helped give him the competitive edge on this, but... This is a very intense, intense situation here. Look at all those abilities. Haste, Flying, Vigilance, Lifelink, <laughs> Fabricate to you. Other creatures you control get plus one, plus one. That's it is a, it's a beefy creature. I don't think, I don't think Wizards ever make something that powerful. All right, so he's going to make it a... What? I don't, he must be fucking taking the piss now. Wizards have never made a creature as powerful as Angel of Invention. ...by single target removal, which we know Trihex has in his deck. So let's see what happens here. Right, he's going to go to attacks. If I was him... This is a tough attack set, but he's definitely flying in with that Vigilance lifelink. He's going to gain 6 life, go all the way up to 23, and uh, take Trihex down to 6, which means if Trihex can't deal with this Angel next turn, he's just lost the game. Yep. Yeah, and Fairlight actually was all very, very close to lethal here, right? If right. Trihex had one fewer creatures, it would have been forced al to block. Almost, yeah, forced to block almost dead, so. Yeah. Thankfully, Fairlight does not have any rem removal spells in his hand for Trihex, and so Trihex has one more... Yeah, we'll just gloss over the fact that none of his other peeps attacked. Yeah, no need for the commentary team to have brought up the potential of that. I mean, he could bring in three 4-4 four, four Sacred Cats, swing in for all of them. They're all going to be 5-5 five, five, thanks to the Angel Invention, and uh, gain 15 life. Yep, so, so pretty much putting Triax completely out of the game. So let's see if the Refurbish is targeting the God Pharaoh's Gift. I believe it will be. And look at that, three God Pharaoh's Gift in a single turn. Pretty powerful. Let's see if he drops the Minister of Inquiries. I would also probably want to play the Search for Ascante here. But I don't think he actually will be able to. I don't think Ascante the second rule taps for blue mana. <sighs> so, yeah. Fairlight's, Fairlight's thinking about maybe using those Ministers of Inquiries. But, uh, yeah, he does have one that is able to tap because he doesn't have something sickness. But he's just going to end the turn. Yeah. Pass it back over to Trihex, who... Well, it's do or die this time right now, Trihex. Let's what? see what you got. Show me what you want. What's this pulsey bullshit? Does that have summoning sickness from the previous turn? Maybe. 
This doesn't have summoning sickness, does it? It was on the field a minute ago. I don't know what the fuck we're looking at. Join in, go to mtgarena.com, sign up for the closed beta. I'll sign up and to you your can, mom's uh, experience beta. some of this as well. Now, we are playing a very special version of this that the developers have made just for this event where they're able to import two of the Pro Tour standard decks. And we can see them face off. So these are some high top tier level magic decks and with some actually some top tier play as well. Yeah. Uh, the players fortunately have the help of some of our OG streamers behind them. And uh, it's, it's going to be, uh, I think it's, I think it's kind of game over for Trihex here. I mean, his best option is to draw a single target removal and get rid of that angel. And then he still needs to claw back against yeah, three God Pharaoh's gifts. Three God Pharaoh's gifts, yeah, which is going to make three Sacred Cats. I don't know if he's really going to be able to do it here. Now, they are going to be able to block very profitably, so maybe he is going to win this game after all, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, so Trihex going through his turn. Looks like he's going to put a plus one, plus one counter on Walking uh, Ballista, but... That's going to be three because of those. It's funny, this guy also calls it a walking Batista. I mean, I only say that because of Dave Batista. What about the word Batista is so familiar to him? Weird. Features here, but in order to kill the angel, he's going to have to get up to a 6 6. And if he does that, well, then he is most assuredly dead on the crackback because he's only at six life. But if he doesn't kill the angel, it's just lethal in the air next turn. Yep. I mean, he could put more counters on that walking ballista, but. In doing so, you'd have to tap his winding constrictors, and so... Yeah, and not having any blockers on the ground. I mean, not to mention, he's just going to die to the three God Pharaoh's gifts. It's going to yeah. make three 5-5 five, five sacred cats, unless he kills the angel, in which case they're 4-4s. Four, four, they're going to just... All right, I... This has this had haste. I don't know why this is pulsing as well, then. Maybe it only had t haste for a turn. I don't know what the shit we're looking at. Going to put some plus one. Looks like he's going to put some plus one, plus one counters onto that walking ballista, but we'll see what he decides to do. Still has three cards in hand. Nope. Walking ballista will get three. Count them. Plus one, plus one counters become a seven, seven, and he can use it to ping away that angel of invention, that flyer that's levitating over the battlefield. All right. Well, it's not instantaneously dead. Oh, he's, oh, he's showing he's going, us. He's going for the real kill on his own terms. Ladies and gentlemen, I've never seen anything like this in my entire career. Walking Ballista turning on its own master and delivering every single plus one, plus one counter in the form of a ping of damage. What a load of fucking noobs. Fucking put your dick back in your pants, you fucking babies. This is it. Yeah, don't give Fairlight the satisfaction of winning by attacking him with his own creature's tracks is going to take his own life here. Yeah, don't give him the satisfaction. Waste everyone's time. No need to concede. We'll show that you can do a walking Batista yourself. He wasn't even dead. I mean, block, then take away the counters and kill this. Obviously, he can internalize all of this stupid shit. Whatever. Eat my balls. That last counter can go anywhere he wants. Stick that counter. And it's on rocks. itself. Oh, oh no, it went out. to its all right. And that is the game, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> victory for victory Fairlight. for Fairlight. And that is gonna wrap it up as well for us. A great game between those two players. Some awesome, awesome decks. Wow. Welcome back to the booth, everybody. I'm Jimmy Wong here with Ben SW. We just saw some thrilling matches on M. All right. Eat my shit and fuck off.